themselves. That was something interesting. Okay, I'm gonna move on to some simpler stuff. If you have any questions on this, come and talk to me afterwards. Love to talk to you more. So let's talk a little bit about hive design standards and manufacturing. Um, when I was in India, the hive standard and quality was just not quite the same. Um, these were some hives that were in not good condition for disrepair, but hives out in the field often look this bad. So often you see frames that they'd be warped. Um, you see boxes that have holes in them. Uh, lots and lots and lots of challenges just in the beehive box uh, manufacturing and design. Interestingly though, where we show out a lot of money for our beehives, maybe $200 or more a piece, they can buy a beehive for $11 and then it gets a 50% subsidy. So it's a little bit, I mean, take your pick. It's a pretty nice deal for the cost for a beehive. They're just often not in very good conditions. One of my favorite things was going actually visiting the hive manufacturers. This was one of the hive, hive manufacturing places. Uh, lots of interesting things. You don't see a lot of squares. You don't see a lot of levels. Um, but you do see a lot of handwork. Okay. frames go on like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, did I see handwork? Yes, you don't see a lot of levels or squares, but you see a lot of, a lot, a lot of work by hand. Okay. Um, and so there's a guy on the back who's painting. You have somebody who's sanding one of the edges. Um, you see a lot of pretty boxes, but they're not perfectly all the same size, um, which is interesting. Yes? What kind of wood do they use? Is it green? Um, so it was very interesting. I didn't know a lot about wood going into this. Uh, some of it was teak, I think. Some of it was, I don't remember the other kinds. I'll have to look it up. But they would use whatever was normally inexpensive. For the frames, they might go with a better wood. Uh, because the frames, you have to have them, they're thinner, they have to be a little harder. And then they would actually leave the wood out to dry uh, and sort of get into a state where it'd be better to use them. Um, it was interesting because uh, this, this other hive manufacturer, I don't have a picture of it right now, but he had a big like, plot of land where he just had wood out to dry. He'd cut it himself, he'd start with logs, he'd cut it himself, he'd put it out, he'd have it dry, and then he would cut it in even smaller pieces, and then he'd build right from that. Um, there's a lot of interesting things to go into how they made, made the hives, like uh, just in sort of the process. So this particular thing is a hive roof. These are your hive roofs, Janet. Um, and one of the things that they did was they'd have slightly longer pieces and they'd nail it all down and then they'd come by very quickly and cut off the sides to make it nice and square. Okay, so it's not quite square, but it, but it fits together. Um, it was it kind of, kind of, um, but it was eleven dollars a hive, so you know. Um, so this was part of the hive manufacturing. One of my favorite things was I actually got to go through and say, okay, these are points that you could improve to make things work better, save money even, uh, which the hive manufacturer is very excited about. You did see a lot of beekeepers making their own equipment, whether that's just simple repairs or making it themselves. So again, that's making it such that things aren't always the same size. Um, I want to go back to this question, which was, why are hives not always supered? Uh, there's a lot of answers. One of them is that the hive boxes don't fit particularly well on top of each other. <laughs> it's, it's an unfortunate, unfortunate consequence. Uh, the one guy, I, I saw a couple of supered hives. They would stick the boxes, they'd seal them with mud, they might take nails and kind of nail them together. Um, it's not a, great, not a great system when you want to have big hives. They weren't really made for that. But there's a lot of really cool cost-effective things. So one is the stands for that. They don't have to have these big rugged stands because they don't have big hives. They're very easy to lift relative to our hives. Um, you would not probably need help, Janet, because you could oh, lift these. Yeah. I, I mean, would go to day dropping out. It would be it would be good. Um, and, but in addition, I don't think all the Indian beekeepers really. When I showed them a picture of like, okay, this is the hives I've been working with. They had never seen a hive so big, okay? Because that's not that's just traditionally not what they've seen before. So part of it was awareness. Um, one of the interesting things that I got to do for my thesis though was I ended up going through a paywall and paying money to get the official Indian hive standard. Um, and it was a slightly older document. Unfortunately, uh, the specifications for what the standard size of Indian bee hives are supposed to be, unfortunately they conflict. Um, and so there is no good Indian hive standard for all of India. Um, and this is a problem, so part of my thesis was writing out, okay, these are the standards that conflict, these are the things you could focus on, 
one of them being the screen bottom board. That would be a lovely thing they could add if they're updating mm -hmm. it. And starting with that, but then also starting on the demand side, because I talked about how manufacturers said, I would love to make a standard size beehive, but my beekeepers say, I want seven frame hives. And so that's what I have to build, because I have to get paid. So part of it uh, was, let's go and try to get from the government route, try to get an official Indian hive standard. And they also, there's this part of going to the grassroots level, getting the beekeepers to want like hives that are going to stack well, that they know what the right size and working from there. So lots of aspects of that. Yes? So the question is, is are the frames standard? Obviously the boxes are different, but are the frames standard? Frames, well, they should be. Um, one of the problems is that you have a lot of frames that are a little bit too long or too short, so they'd have to sort of swap between boxes. And that was, that's a pain point, especially for these, these beekeepers that have to migrate their boxes. So yes, it should be standardized. In practice, it's not perfect. And it's something that is definitely a pain point for the beekeepers. Are they migrating to follow the blossom? Yes, they do. Uh, when this is your income, you move the bees wherever they gotta be. Um, one thing to note about this that was very interesting. So we heard uh, recently about the big uh, pesticide kill like in the Carolinas. Um, I want you to imagine though, like most, most beekeepers, you, like for, for me, I have to think about one plot because I'm, I'm on kind of a, a secluded farm area. I have to think about that one person applying pesticides. Many of the commercial beekeepers, you put your, your hives on somebody's farm. You might have to think about a couple people and remind them not to apply pesticides. Remember back to how I said there's lots of little farm plots? The foraging mile was still one mile radius, and so they are constantly hit with the beekeeper down the road, not the beekeeper, but the farmer down the road decided to apply pesticides, and I have to deal with 50 of them, and maybe 40 of them understand not to apply pesticides too heavily, but that one, that one farmer really hurt me. Um, and so that was one of the things that uh, actually came out of the experiment. Why is the honey going down? He said, well, the con farmer decided to apply pesticides. So it's very interesting. There's a question. Yes. I was just going to ask about the, the quality of the, the variations in quality. Does that affect the bee space and the length of the based on the bee space? Did you see any problems with like, uh, it? I'm sure it frames? affects some. Um, a lot of commercial beekeepers in the US, though, will opt for nine frame hives, uh, nine frames and 10 frame box just because it's easier. So I'm sure there is some truth to maybe the optimal is 10 frames, but we kind of get away with a little more, a little less. Um, but yes, that like when it's when it's system. bowed, that definitely definitely makes a difference. How long have they been using a, a, the box like a Langstroth hive? And, and who introduced that? Was it English? So there was there was an entrepreneur. I actually met the guy, uh, or at least his son, in the northern part of the Indian Punjab, uh, and they got introduced with the European bee and that the Europe uh, so the Langstroth boxes, I believe, in the seventies. Um, the and then they've been expanding. When they, yes, when they tried to introduce it to the south, it didn't take, so that's why you still see a lot of the Indian beekeeping. In remote areas, um, like the Himalayas that I visited, you still see often the native bee. Um, it's often promoted as organic. Yes? You said earlier that they get subsidized. Who subsidizes? The government, yep. If the government subsidizes, why doesn't the government, why aren't they able to put in their I, that is a great, a great question. Um, it's, it's a complicated range of forces. If you actually saw a lot of Indian architecture, you know, even the houses are not particularly square. So trying to get the spec for bee boxes is equally, equally challenging. Um, but it's, but it's very interesting. Yes. Uh, United States, Canada, and Mexico standardized the size of the Langstroth. Uh, about 150 years ago. And we don't realize how lucky we are that we only have one size to deal with. Yes. Okay, there's the eight frame, but, but this, the size of yep. and And you can you can pick up a, a hive that was, was 40 years old, and it's yep. still the same size, and everything fits. It's a fits. big benefit for us that yeah. we don't, we don't appreciate a, a, as much. Miles ahead, yes. but we don't realize how damn lucky we are. You go to Europe, you can get 15 different you can get yep. 15 different size boxes in one country. Yep. The German national, the Swedish national yep. hive, the, the, the metric hive, the Landestrap. It's, it's a, just a big hodgepodge, and India is no different. Yep. We're so lucky here that we only got one size to deal with. Yep. Definitely agree. Any, any other questions?